Disney songs are destroying children's more compasses, maybe even their lives. Hey everyone, I'm Leo Camacho, and maybe that intro was a bit over-exaggerated, but Disney is powerful, and children are impressionable and vulnerable. For example, and be honest, did you ever try snapping your fingers to make your room clean itself? Maybe try talking to some birds and squirrels? Or look under a rock at the grubs and thought, Oh well, Hakuna Matata. Disney songs aren't just incredibly catchy, they're influential. So as a kid, when your room doesn't clean itself, it's no big deal. But eating grubs? That could actually be dangerous and possibly even deadly. Slimy, it's satisfying. But what we're interested in here is the presentation of perspective, ideological and philosophical messages that shape worldview that may have shaped your worldview even. In fact, some of our favorite songs mean the exact opposite of what the entire movie is about, and it's easy to forget that. Love is an open door. Exhibit A, the bad guy song. <laughs> Disney makes it so easy to parse the lyrics of their villain songs, and most would agree that seeing a five-year-old strolling down the street while belting out poor unfortunate souls well, might be a little unusual. When Disney launched their newest golden age with The Underwater Princess in 1989, they crafted Ursula and her tunes in such a way that there was little denying that her words were anything but deception. The same minor tonalities and darker innuendos resonate in Scar's Be Prepared. And Disney is consistent here. Look at the most recent Disney tunes. In Tamatoa's Shiny, there's little room for subtlety. <laughs> Did your granny say, listen to your heart? Be who you are on the inside. She did. I need three words to tear her argument apart. Your granny lied. But no, she didn't. And once again, this adversary's lyrics are contextualized in his direct combat with our hero. Shiny is a song about vanity, and Moana is grappling with the idea of inner self versus outer self. Look at Maui's tattoos, or Tafiti's ultimate transformation. The film knows exactly where Shiny belongs in its overall design, but taken out of context, it's just a song about blink. But what about when the protagonist's ally sings a memorable song? Exhibit B, the Don't Worry, Be Happy song. The first from arguably the greatest Disney film of all time, Hakuna Matata. The song's meaning is pretty clear. You might even call it a problem-free philosophy. When the world turns its back on you, you turn your back on the world. Except, of course, it's not problem-free, and the movie knows it. Well, that's not what I was taught. It's essential to the design of the narrative. Simba just witnessed his father's premature death at the hands of his uncle Scar, who, by the way, makes Simba feel responsible for all of it. That's pretty heavy. So what do you do? <coughs> Hakuna Matata. You run away, try to escape your problem, and join up with a talking boar and a meerkat? Yeah, all right. Escaping overwhelming grief may be okay for a while, but it's not a long-term solution for the rest of your days. The movie shows this in how Simba ultimately faces his past. Than what you have become. Remember who you are. It's the same in the Jungle Book's Bare Necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. Mowgli and Baloo have to realign their paradigm, just like Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa do. Remember this? You guys have to create a diversion. What do you want me to do? Dress and drag and do the hula? Timon and Pumbaa do anything but turn their back on the world when they help Simba sneak into his old kingdom. And here in the Jungle Book, Baloo doesn't just try to relax once he has someone in his life that he cares about. He risks it all to help rather than take it easy. This is character development 101. When the songs are this fun and with favored characters, it's easy to forget that these songs' messages are supposed to be antithetical to the story's greater themes. Perhaps least on the nose, though, is this next example. Exhibit C, the Bad Guys Don't Worry song. We have to mention Let It Go, not just because it's arguably the biggest hit of all Disney songs, short of I Can Show You the World, which, by the way, is also a lie. Aladdin is still pretending to be a prince at this point in the movie. It's Disney's musical version of Aladdin fluffing his Tinder profile. Uh, anyway, I digress. Let It Go is more complex than the other examples because rather than have some friendly animals try to convince Elsa of a newfound philosophy, she's trying to convince herself and seems to be going back and forth. She's hiding herself, then lets it go, but then slams the door, effectively hiding herself again. Back and forth and back and forth, until the very end, the last line before the chorus reprisal. I'm never going back, the past is in the past. Except she does go back just like Simba and Mowgli. She reunites with her sister and saves the entire kingdom largely from herself. There's a strong woman-against-self narrative in this piece, similar in parts to Aladdin's journey, but both need their full story context to fulfill the song's intended influence. So, you know, just 
don't let it go. The songs mean exactly what they're supposed to because they're intended to be in the point of view of the character in that specific, temporary moment within the larger context of the film. But if you're as oblivious as I am driving around one day and then realize suddenly for the first time that the song you like so much is really actually quite terrible life advice, then this is a good reminder that the songs are only part of the story. Important, but incomplete. This is Gamma Ray and I'm Leo Camacho. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this. We'll see you guys next time.